Let's be honest. As bassists, it can be pretty tempting to leave the complicated stuff up to the horn and piano players. And why shouldn't we? Let's say you got a C-sharp diminished 7 chord for two beats. All you gotta do is play a tritone and you're done! But while that's the beauty of playing over chords that are only lasting for, let's say, two beats, chords of longer durations give us bass players the opportunity to join the land of the enlightened musician. So with that in mind, let's check out Paul Chambers walking over eight bars of static harmony during Miles Davis's first chorus on the tune, So What? So What? is a 32 measure tune with an A-A-B-A -A -A form. The song only has two chords in it, a D minor seven for the A section and an E flat minor seven for the B section. I'll admit, I've known for years that modal tunes like this were meant to be more of a template for superimposing other harmony on top of. I just figured it didn't really apply to me in my role as a bassist. It seemed more like something for soloists. I just took the idea and shelved it somewhere deep inside next to altered ninths. So you can imagine my surprise when I started transcribing PC's line on Miles Davis's first solo chorus, and during the B section I started to notice some slightly different things happening than I was expecting. You'll see what I mean. Here's what he plays there. First, I wasn't sure what was going on. It kind of sounded like I was hearing E flat minor 7 stuff, but it kept sounding like it was coming from different angles, like it was kind of Picasso-y or something. The first couple of bars are very E flat minor, but take a look at the third measure. The A natural acts as a chromatic passing tone between the B flat and A flat, while the G flat pushes into an F on the downbeat of measure 4. The phrasing doesn't sound out, it just sounds reorganized. If we look at these two measures as belonging to a B flat 7 instead of an E flat minor 7, it starts to make more sense. A B flat 7 would be a 5 chord of E flat minor 7. Now I know what you're thinking, but Danny, if it was a 5 of E flat minor 7, wouldn't it need to have a flat 9 on it? Boom! Check out the B naturals on beats 2 and 4 in measure 4. There's your flat 9s. We also have a 5 and a flat 7. It seems to me that Paul Chambers is implying a five chord here, a five of E flat minor seven. Let's continue on to measure five. The bass line starting on this D flat might look and sound familiar to you. It's kind of that thing, but put into like a bass line. This is a super common way of playing over a one chord or a five chord or any major chord that lasts for a couple measures. But linguistically, it's definitely trying to say D flat is the anchor point of this harmony of this chord. I've got a one, I've got a three, I've got a five. You got your D flat, your F, your A flat. Very strong notes of that triad. And then PC puts a C flat right here. That C flat would be the flat seven of a D flat dominant seven chord. So how does a D flat dominant seven chord relate to an E flat minor seven chord? While using a dominant seven chord rooted on the fifth to resolve to the one chord is probably the most common way of resolving to a one chord, there's an alternative place we can put that dominant seventh chord in relationship to the one chord, and that's basing it off of the flat seven. You've probably heard of the mysterious backdoor dominant chord. This is the backdoor dominant chord. I think that would make the B flat dominant seven chord a front door cadence, but I wouldn't go around YouTube calling it that. After the D flat seven chord, PC lands on an F natural in measure seven and walks it down like it's the fifth note of a front door dominant. These notes are a B flat mixolydian bebop scale descending from the fifth. This D natural on B three of measure seven and the way that the B flat passes through an A natural on its way to A flat in measure eight here seem to strongly indicate an implied B flat seven chord in the last two bars, if you ask me. I think that Paul Chambers' superimposition of the front door dominant and the back door dominant over this E flat minor seven chord is a really hip way of introducing tension while still keeping it within the realm of functional harmony that relates back very clearly to the E flat minor seven. It just kind of makes it sound hip without being too jarring or like pretentious. Let's check out what the bridge would sound like if the piano player was comping for these chords instead of just the E flat minor seven.
it's super important to note that PC isn't making these choices and playing all this stuff in a vacuum. He's bouncing off Miles Davis. The way that him and Miles are locking together, especially on this part, there's one point where their lines actually like come together and do like the same thing. The level of communication these guys had, it's just unworldly and uncanny. It's really something to behold. So what do you think? Is my analysis total garbage? Am I full of crap? Oh, and also, what's with the E natural on beat four of measure eight? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.